Hello again. In this set of video lectures, we'll be talking about Medicare. Medicare is a very important topic, can be up to 45% of a hospital's revenue stream and upwards to two thirds of revenue for a medical office. So really important to get our mind around everything involving Medicare. I'll let you read the objectives on your own, but these are some of the things we'll be talking about. Medicare, how you're eligible, what's covered, all the different types of it, what to do with Medicare participating, non-participating, paying and opt-out providers, billing notes, claims, Medigap insurance, and some of these other things that we'll talk about. The mass vaccination program, which is, of course, heavily in the news. And again, Medicare, of course, is the largest single health care program in the United States. That certainly makes sense because CMS is the largest provider of health care services in the United States. How you're eligible for Medicare is based on a couple of things. We always think of it as being over age 65, also covers people with end-stage renal disease requiring dialysis and transplant, people that are disabled. And again, it's kind of morphed a little bit over the years since Medicare went into effect with 1965. It includes both Part A, Part B is the original Medicare, Part A being the hospital coverage, Part B being the medical office, and other coverage. And now we see other things that we're going to be talking about. We're going to be talking about Medicare Advantage, Medicare's prescription drug coverage that uses a drug formulary and other topics. So rather than have you do the knowledge check, we'll just go over a couple of key points of it right here things that you really need to know. And these include, what are all the different parts of Medicare? Part A is the entitlement. This is the hospital insurance. You need to work so many years, be over age 65, and it covers inpatient care, right? If you're admitted overnight to a acute care hospital, but it also covers skilled nursing facility, hospice and home health. Two different kinds of claim forms. We always think of this UBO4, which we do for the facility charges, if you will. And then the physician charges, if needed, would be on the 1500 form, which we're familiar with. Speaking of 1500 forms, we have Medicare Part B. These are the physician and other qualified healthcare practitioner services. This includes outpatient care, durable medical equipment, pre preventative services, or as people say, PrevMed. These all go on the 1500 form. Now we get into things that are a little bit more interesting. This is Medicare Part C, Medicare Advantage. We used to call this Medicare Risk or Kaiser Senior Advantage, Secure Horizons, all these other different types of things. And in this case, there are no claim forms. What happens is the insurance company gets a capitated payment based on the risk adjusted value of the, the enrollee. So if somebody's in Kaiser Medicare Advantage, they pay a predetermined amount every month and they get services that are subject to the copay. And it doesn't change whether they're seen 200 times in a year or once a year. And where coding and health information comes into this is if you have a typical health plan member, the average Joe Blow Medicare Kaiser member, and they have the normal burden of health care cost, they're considered a risk-adjusted score of 1.0. As we add on more chronic conditions, hypertension, 
um, polyneuropathy, major depression, all these other different types of things. And those are documented, coded, and addressed. Then there's going to be more payment that comes in to the insurance company. In an organization like Kaiser that flows to the health plan and then gets distributed to the two other entities within Kaiser. And then in the other option, the medical office gets a bonus from the insurance company for hitting a certain amount of risk adjusted scores. So it's kind of like an incentive program, if you will. Then finally, we have Medicare Part D, and these are prescription brand and generic coverage. So basically, this is a way of keeping your prescription drug coverage. And again, the patient picks up that type of coverage. Likewise, with the Medicare Part C, retirees or the patient is paying it. The only part of Medicare that is the entitlement, if you will, is right here, part A. One moment. There we go, I can turn off my annotating. So again, as we talked about, you need to have worked at least 10 years in which you paid your Medicare payroll tax. And that's a line item typically on most people's paycheck. In order to be eligible, you need to be at least 65 years of age. And people have that in their head that you have to be a US citizen. That's actually not correct. If you have a green card and are considered a permanent resident of the United States, you're also eligible for Medicare coverage. People get automatically enrolled if you're getting Social Security already, if you're getting a railroad pension, if you're just dis getting disability benefits, or if you have ALS, otherwise known as Lou Gehrig's disease. And again, everybody else you have to enroll. Part A and Part B become effective the month of your 65th birthday. An important thing to spell out to people, whether you are working or not, you need to apply unless you're in one of these carve out groups, even if you're working. What happens if you don't do that? Well, as some people I know have found out, they may actually owe some money back. Reason being is that your health insurance is paying more of the burden and Medicare would be the primary. So important thing to keep in mind, bottom line, please enroll in Medicare when you turn 65. And again, you get a Medicare card. If you have parents that are Medicare age, you've probably seen this. And again, if you don't fall into one of the carve outs, you have to apply for Medicare. Potentially higher payment may be demanded from whoever you're getting your insurance from. If you don't, you have a seven month period to apply for Medicare Part A and Part B. And we'll just cut to the knowledge the answer for the activity check, Medicare eligibility. What happens if somebody is unable to enroll in Medicare eligibility? Well, during their initial enrollment period, you do have that seven month window. So it's not like it has to happen on the day that you turn 65. You can also apply in the months leading up to that. And again, we talked about the Part A, Part B, Part C, Part D. There are additional Medicare supplemental plans, which we'll get into in our next set of lectures. And that's all I have for you. Come back and we'll talk more about Medicare, Medicare supplemental plans, and more. <laughs>